Okay, let's get started. Let's go over the hardware and what I'm going to be using for this build today. This is the case I did a short slideshow at the beginning of this video. Uh, it was an HP, I'm not sure the model number, computer from Walmart. I use, I'm using this case because it has an inverted motherboard tray, meaning I put a window in the side and it will be on the right side of the case instead of a standard and the left side of the case. So when it sets on a desk, uh, where where this is going, uh, the gentleman has the computer sitting on his left side. So to see all the hardware, he needed a case with a inverted motherboard tray with the window on the right side of the case. So I took an HP case that he. Uh, his old computer that died and I modified it. This had a long brace as you've seen in the slideshow. It was just a standard case. I customized it, painted it, cut out the brace, cut out for a 120 millimeter fan, cut out for the PCI slot, for the graphics card. Let's go over the hardware we're going to be using on this, uh, this build. For starters, we've got an ASUS motherboard. Here's the manual. This is an ASUS M4A88T-M-LE motherboard. It's a micro ATX AM3 socket. It has SATA 3. Uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's just a basic micro ATX motherboard. Uh, they're pretty good. They have core unlocker. Uh, all ASUS is a uh, overclocking suite. They're uh, they're just all good all around boards. I've actually used that board in uh, about four different builds already, and I really like it. The processor we'll be using is an AMD Athlon quad-core 640 3 gigahertz processor. The memory we'll be using is ADATA. There's uh, two 4 gig sticks. It's 8 gigs of uh, DDR3 1333 speed. The graphics card we'll be using is an ASUS GeForce 8400GS. This is 1 gigabyte 64-bit uh, graphics card. I uh, will be running a monitor on the VGA and the HDMI is going to be uh, traveling to a, a big screen TV in the living room. The hard drive we'll be using is a Western Digital Blue 500 gigabyte, 32 megabyte SATA hard drive. I built a custom uh, hard drive tray for this build uh, because of the way I removed all the bra uh, bracing in the case it didn't leave me any place to really mount a hard drive so I salvaged this out of I believe a Dell and I chopped it up it had a bunch of other uh, angles and uh, brackets uh, on it I just used a Dremel and made it, uh, made it to what I needed the CPU fan 
is uh, one of my own creations. I did this on my own computer and it runs a 8 core processor very well. It takes a standard AMD heat sink with their fan with a 4 pin connector so that the uh, motherboard will control the speed. Uh, high static pressure 120 millimeter fan into this Nexus adapter which uh, tapers it to the 80 millimeter fan. This creates a Venturi similar into a carburetor of a car which uh, takes low pressure and creates a very high pressure by the time it condenses it. It also uh, cools the air by condensing the air and makes it a lot cooler. I dropped the uh, CPU temperatures approximately 5 degrees Celsius by adding that bracket and that extra fan. We have a fan for the front of the case. I did a braided cable on it and shortened it. Uh, it's just a blue 120 millimeter LED high airflow and a 92 millimeter high airflow also for the rear of the case. The power supply we're going to be using is an Antec 450 watt. I also installed a blue LED fan in this and uh, all the cables did not come braided. They only braided the, uh, the 24 pin connector. I went ahead and took it apart and braided all the other cables. Uh, to go for the SATA cables, the uh, four pin, the DVD drive, optical drive I'll be using is just your standard HP DVD multi drive, uh, DVD and uh, CD recording. Uh, it actually came in that computer that was purchased from Walmart. I also painted it black so it kind of blends in and uh, doesn't stand out inside the case. I believe that covers all the uh, hardware, so I think we should uh, start building it. So uh, let me take a quick break here and set up, and uh, be right back. Okay, I prepped the case for to start installing the hardware. I took the front cover off. As you can see, it has the original power switch, HD LED, and the power light. Uh, it's got an SD card reader, two micro USB 2 ports, headphone, and audio jack. I braided all the cables so it'll look nice in here. The USB cables and the front panel connectors. They're all braided now so it'll look a little nicer. So let me uh, zoom this in and let's start installing some hardware. Because this is not a brand new case, it did not come with a uh, hardware, you know, screws and hardware kit. So I put one together myself. I got a lot of a lot of screws from uh, leftover from other builds. The first thing we're going to have to install is the hard drive tray. Because of the way I designed this, uh, it's actually going to go slightly under that fan and then uh, the way I got to screw in the hard drive through a hole I bored in the front and from the side here I can't have the motherboard in installed. So let's go ahead and uh, screw that down. Now I just drilled and tapped the threads into the case and then drilled out the uh, holes in the hard drive tray. So it just screws right in. Let's get all four screws started and then we'll snug them up. They're pretty small screws because they're going to be they're flush so they don't interfere in the hard drive. I believe I salvaged them out of the hinge screws out of a laptop. Pretty sure what them are for. Okay, now that all four started, I'm going to go ahead and snug them up. OK, 
Okay, let's go ahead and install the hard drive now. So that it's out of the way. It just goes in like that. There's two screws for screw into the side of the hard drive. One's here, like I said, I can't have the motherboard in or it will interfere with it. The second one needs to be installed through a hole I bored in the front with a drill bit just big enough to access it. It will make in replacing the hard drive a little more difficult, but it's Western Digital Blues are pretty darn good hard drives and they should last a quite a long time. Let's go ahead and install the front fan. Uh, I did a custom braided short cable on it. It's going to hide beside this hard drive and plug in directly from the power supply. So let's go ahead and install that now. Slide the connector down. Right there. Now well, let's deal with the connector later. And I have four screws for it somewhere. These don't have to be black because you're not going to see them behind the front case cover. Let's get them all started and then we'll tighten them down. Okay, so let them are in. <coughs> As you can see there, it's all installed there. Looks kind of pretty. And once I plug that in with the from the power supply, I'll tuck it in beside this hard drive tray. There's just enough room there, and it'll keep it hidden. And that is a blue LED fan. Let's go ahead and install the back. IO shield, which is very simple. You just line it up, make sure you have the orientation correct with the speaker outputs and uh, all your connectors, and just pop it in. And there you go. Let's go ahead and install the motherboard. Just set it down in there. Make sure you have your uh, ground straps on your IO plate or where they're supposed to be. in regards to your ports. Once she's in set in place, let's get the screws uh, out for the motherboard. Now HP had their own threads 
Not sure why, so I'm going to have to use the original. HP screws for the motherboard. So let's just get them all started before we tighten any of them down. Let's go ahead and snug them up. You don't want to over tighten them. They just need snugged up. And there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, install the rear fan and get that out of the way. Like the uh, front fan I customized, I braided the cable but also added a three pin splice connector. There's only one other uh, fan header on the motherboard. And uh, as you can see on my homemade CPU cooler, this is gonna have to plug into that and it's gonna control the speed of the uh, fan. So I went ahead and soldered and added a three pin connector to it. This will exit out the back. So let's uh, find some screws for it. I'm not using black screws because it's uh, visible in the back of the case. You can't really see. almost all the way in but not tight just just to hold it there it must have been 10 minutes because my uh, camera shut off let's go ahead and install this into the rear of the case I want the harness to come out the side there See, there's only three holes in this case. There's actually a guide pin for the fourth screw hole in the fan. So we'll only be installing three because HP has supplied a guide pin. As you can see, the rear fan is in. This will come down. And we'll install just like that. And it'll leave a three pin connector for my uh, CPU fan. Let's go ahead and install the CPU. corresponding triangle on the motherboard and there's a corresponding gold triangle on the processor. Just drop it into place and lock it into place. Even though it's new, I still like to clean the top with some rubbing alcohol before I apply thermal paste in case there's any manufacturing oils or contaminants on it. Do the same to the bottom of the C 
CPU Kohler. Before I install the CPU Kohler because it's very large at the top, I'm going to go ahead and install the memory. As I said, we have 8 gigabytes of A data, DDR3-1333. Line the, uh, the slot here in the connector with the motherboard and just push it and click it right into place. And that's installed. Very, very easy. Now we can install our CPU cord. I use uh, Arctic Silver 5. It's inexpensive and it's a really good thermal paste. I've tried a lot of different ones and this just works. So I continue to use it. I want to install the orientation this way because of the connectors. Make sure the rear connector is on the bracket. And then clamp it down. I give it a little twist and a smush to make sure it seats and squishes any excess thermal paste out. And leaves the thinnest layer possible for the contact between the processor and the uh, I'll tidy these up with some tie straps later. We're going to leave it for now. But there's the CPU. Okay, I'm going to take a short break. Uh, this is going to stop again, the camera. So, and then I'll turn it around so we can see the installation, get a better view of the installation. We're going to put the DVD drive in and the power supply in next.